Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. This is the first edition um, that we are doing. Um, I am Xavier Cruz, and I am joined by my lovely co-host and lifelong friend, Kelsey Silva. Um, how are you? How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm so excited. Long I know. Me coming. Uh, honestly, this has been in the works for a couple months, um, mm-hmm. literally, and a couple years in the uh, uh, imagination. In the ether, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I figured since this is our first episode, we can kind of just kind of do a, so a few introduction kind of moments. Um, just tell us um, a little bit about you and your kind of relationship with wrestling. Um, I know it is brief generally. Um, and then I'll kind of go in and do the same on my end. Okay. Like Xavier said, we've been lifelong friends. Um, and I think that I kind of caught the wrestling bug mostly from watching it with Xavier we would get together at his place at his apartment um on Wednesdays and watch it we get food watch it and I think what really sucked me in is the drama I'm here for the drama the costumes the makeup I just think it's so entertaining and it just I don't know I just like once we started watching it and then like chitter chattering about it I just didn't it just gets so addicting so um my introduction has been brief. I only know when I only know things when Xavier gives me the tea. That's all I got. But I am so excited to learn more because I love a backstory. I love a history. I want to know who did what to who. I want to know all, all the ins and outs, the tea, who's got beef with who, and they resolved it. I want to know all of this stuff. So um, yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my god, yes. Um, so I am guilty of. Basically, anytime that I can get anybody to watch wrestling with me, I'm going to make the attempt. Um, And I really uh, got lucky um, that um, Kelsey kind of jumped on and really started like enjoying it. Um, Basically, I would have her come over every like Wednesday and we would watch um, specifically like AEW Dynamite because it was new. And Mm -hmm. that was kind of what I was watching a lot of at the time. Um, But basically, I am a lifelong like wrestling fan. I have been watching since I was like two years old. Um, I can remember my father like kind of explaining um, like watching uh, like Ric Flair. Um, And it's just something we've always kind of like sat down and like watched together. The premise of this show um, is we are going to take Kelsey through the entirety of the Attitude Era specifically. Um, but once we get kind of caught up, um, the really the world is our oyster. There's so much wrestling to watch. Um, so uh, the idea is that there's so much about the Attitude Era, era that one, I was really young for. So like, uh, we are actually starting in the year 1996. So the two of us were two years old when that started <laughs> happening. Um, so there is definitely like just swaths of just like stuff that I've forgotten about or just I've like made up in my head that that's the way things were and probably just were not the case. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of watch through like a like a a first timers uh, eyes um, because I think that's really exciting because it's just kind of like the the wonder of like discovering something that you like kind of really enjoy or really like start to love Um, and Mm. it's like when you watch like kids like go to like Disney World for the first time or something where they're just like ah like they're just so stoked about it and like for me like I enjoy watching other people enjoy the things that I do like so um, that's kind of the premise of the show, and that's kind of how we're going to kick things off. This week, we started with the June 24th, 1996 episode of Monday Night Raw. Um, so that mm. had um, 
it, it's a very different feel than the the wrestling we are currently watching today um Holy. and we'll get into that in a little bit um i'm gonna break down just kind of the card um of matches that happened and then we're gonna kind of just dissect it a little bit um so we had uh ahmed johnson versus hunter hearst helmsley better known as triple h or will soon become known as triple h um we had the body donnas uh versus the brooklyn brawler and a jobber someone they i don't even think they actually said his name the entirety of the match so nope. couldn't even tell you um we had vader owen hart and the british bulldog versus a group of jobbers again they it was salvia vega and two people i've literally never heard of um, and then the main event was um, The Undertaker uh, versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. And we are coming on the tales of uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's infamous King of the Ring um, Austin 316 speech. So this is really the first episode where we really start referring to Stone Cold Steve Austin as he will become known as uh, kind of like the rattlesnake. And you kind of throughout the episode, will you'll really hear the commentators like, repeatedly say his name so that it like starts to stick into the like uh into the minds of all the viewers so yeah it was it was an interesting an interesting time to kind of like go back into 1996 for sure definitely Kelsey what did you think were like kind of the biggest differences as far as like what we've watched like currently versus kind of like going back in time to like 1996 I mean other than like the hair <laughs> because it was oh tall God. and it was all over the place there was a lot of blonde with brown roots a lot of hair gel but that's also the hair gel is not uncommon and also i was going to say the costuming is still the same fabulosity um i think the the biggest difference i noticed and i said it to you when we were watching it was that they don't spend so much time on the top rope. Like, I feel like now when we watch, they're like on the top rope, they like set it up. They really, because I don't know if they're doing more complex moves on the top of the rope now. Um, but they just like, they get up there and they jump, they get up there and they jump. Um, that was like a big thing I noticed. And also there's not as much like when we watch now, there's so much where they're like, they've got the guy on his back. And then like, it's like three Two, or one two and then he like the shoulder break and everyone's like oh like, <laughs> it's out and it happens like at least min four to five times if not more and now this is just like a pin or something and i think this was the first match i saw with an outside interference that caused a disqualification or like a forfeit or However, that and I'd never seen that before, and it was with glitter, iconic. Like there was, there was right. a lot, but I think for me, those are the biggest differences. Uh, well, definitely for sure. So what you're gonna like kind of start seeing um, is we're kind of in a like very transitional period of like where um, we're in like the 1980s, like the earlier part of the 90s. Like if you, especially in the WWF, WWE. Um, if unless you were like six foot five and like 300 pounds, like you were not going to be like featured on the show, essentially. Oh, so like now oh, we're sense too. Yeah, exactly. You say that. But so now like um, you're going to start seeing kind of like smaller wrestlers um, or at least more like average sized people. Um, <laughs> and they're just, you know, they're not 300 pounds. So they're going to be able to like spend more time on the top rope and actually like they're they become more and more and especially when you see kind of the advent of um like Shawn michaels um Shawn michaels mm -hmm. is really kind of the f like i don't want to say like the first but he's one of the first to really kind of capture that style of what will become kind of like the staples of wrestling today so like uh yeah and like you'll see him in next week um, when we watch the July 1st episode, um, because he's going to be wrestling there. But you'll see that he's a he's a much smaller competitor um, and he's mm -hmm. just like far more agile than 
what a lot of what you kind of saw today was. Um, that makes so much sense now that you say that because they're all humongous. So like obviously going to the top rope if they're 300 pounds and six nine, like that's not, they're not doing like flips and things like that. Right, exactly. Rope. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. Okay. What on the card was like your favorite match? Uh, definitely The Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin because, did I say that right? I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Because <laughs> it was, it was, of course, the drama for me. I've never seen The Undertaker. I've obviously heard of The Undertaker. I've never seen an entrance. And it was just like the attention to detail, first of all, with like the, the entrance, the all black, the urn, the purple light on the purple outfit with the black, incredible. And then just, I feel like the match itself was super engaging. Like it, like, there was more, I feel like more flips, more things I wasn't expecting. Um, a lot of like broken legs. Like it was, it was a lot, a lot oh. more moments where I was like, oh my God, there's no way. It was crazy. I feel no. like I was more on the edge of my seat for that one. Exactly. And you're really going to see like kind of um, who is going to be like kind of like the main event people. Um, okay. The Undertaker at this point has been kind of on that level for a, a while. Um, but now we're going to start seeing like Stone Cold Steve Austin kind of stepping into that role, um, mm -hmm. which is why this was uh, I for me, this is why th I started here. Um, one, because it's right after the King of the Ring and that like speech, which really kind of for me in my mind is like the start of the like attitude era. That's when we're going to really start seeing kind of a shift in like program that's like geared towards children and then oh. program yeah programming that's geared towards more like young adults oh. um but you're really going to see like um for me like you can tell when wrestlers are kind of like in that like main event or like uh just kind of really understand like the kind of the psychology of wrestling um okay. because they get you engaged like you are a like new passive fan and you're like and you said it yourself you've never seen the undertaker before and you're very like this is also like one of your first exposures to stone cold steve austin outside of mm -hmm. like you know who he is as like a pop culture person right. um but they had you like interested in what they were doing they you believed that like the undertaker was like hurt um <laughs> and then so and then at the end we have like an involvement but with from Goldust who in and of itself is a wild character. Wild. Um, you haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg as far as how weird this guy is. Um, Which is scary because it was so weird. <laughs> there was that's, already that's, so much weird that's, that's the tip of the iceberg. Scary. <laughs> no, exactly because he's such a hard character to like describe. Um because he's just so out there. Um, and there's something like I respect so much about just kind mm. of like, just absolutely like losing yourself in a character where it's Nothing just like- it's not on brand. Fully. So like, it's very, it's very much just like, he just commits to it so hard that like, it's kind of, you get, it's the same kind of awkwardness you get from like watching like The Office or something where you're just like, I'm so uncomfortable but like he's gonna make you sit in the awkwardness for mm -hmm. as long as humanly possible to get a reaction out of you Incredible. um and like from even what it seems like is just like he has i don't know how much the wrestlers even know of what he's like going to do so mm -hmm. like the reactions seem very genuine um like literally the end of this match is like i've it's one of the few times you're gonna see like disqualification by like glitter. He literally just threw glitter in the Undertaker's face. It was so and crazy. that was the end of the match. Are there any um like characters with that were like wrestling or otherwise that like really like stood out to you or one that you like you want to see more of? <laughs> like first impressions because we had we had Ahmed Johnson on this episode. Yeah. Um uh, uh, who dense dense very very dense, very I dense. Said, when xavier and i were watching it i said it was like i've seen knee pads i've seen shin pads i've seen elbow pads i've never seen a man with thigh pads like he meant business oh and he was throwing around triple h throwing around he did a lot of that was and his speech was amazing he was no he was very fascinating and he was very to me very limber for somebody that big like yeah. he was like doing a lot of 
throwing around, like you said. Very interested. I also was only interested for some reason my first, only because, uh, and I'm forgetting the name, the Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Brawler. Uh, Brooklyn yes. Brawler. Brooklyn Brawler, only because I was like, this man literally looks like he came off the sidelines. I was like, I don't understand who this is because he, I said he's wearing jeans and a Yankees t-shirt. And then you're like, it's the Brooklyn Brawler. And I was like, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> really but I was like, that thoughts. that could be any one of my family members <laughs> like just came, <laughs> came off the side. I was like, what is his story? Like, he's very impassioned about fighting. I love that. He's truly a Brooklyn native then. But honestly, that was honestly and I was like very curious about him and then of course the undertaker I was like completely enamored by his entrance the way he fought I'm confused about the urn but I want to know more like the the powers the pallbearer like what (laughs) there's just so many questions but the vibe the commit to the bit I'm so here for that oh yeah and the the thing is, like, he becomes, like, so synonymous with his, like, and his, like, there are very few people, actually, probably, like, nobody who commits to being the character as much as The Undertaker does. Um, uh, he wouldn't be, like, seen in, like, public. Like, he would, like, hide. He, no one, he wouldn't let, like, fans get near him. And this man wrestled for, like, 30 years like 30 years of like committing to just like absolutely like being that character out in public so like the awe that is his like entrance and like everything about him is made so much larger due to the fact that nobody knows anything about him and he loves he loves to keep it that way uh like and and you eat it up you just with a spoon because like he gives you nothing and you nothing. just like and then you're just stuck there just like begging for it you're just like tell Sounds me Sounds like me anything about <laughs> this man um well, that was going to be a question i was going to ask because i was like so we're, we're talking about like people who commit to the bit i'm like do they in real life like if people see them out are they like always in character is that just like their life's com- so or their career's commitment is like if someone runs into somebody at the grocery store are they just like right that's so that was historically like back when there were like territories and things like that was something that was like they had to follow like tooth and nail like you couldn't be if you were like a how they like distinguish them is the uh the good guys are called like baby faces or faces and then the bad guys are called heels heels. yes so if you couldn't be seen like out in public, if you were a baby face, like having a beer with like a heel that like just wouldn't fly. Like that's not something no. they were like allowed to do. Um, and now like up to the point where we are, they're still very much like they more so commit to it. Um, but once the kind of the admin of like the internet comes where like people could just kind of find out everything, um, it becomes less of a thing. Um, so like today, like it's very much like the fans are very much aware even like the younger fans are aware that like they play characters like these aren't like but up until like the advent of the internet like they committed to the bit like they that's who they were like in as far as the public knew every day that Uh, is crazy which is method for life for sure so and like we even have like examples of like rick flair who you will come to find um is somebody who like committed so hard to the bit that like i don't even know if rick flair knows who he was before he was rick flair like and but like if you think about it like that got him to where he is like he's so successful and he's such Mm -hmm. a like pop culture then he's in so many songs you know how many you know, rap songs i was gonna say rick flair bitch go woo on us <laughs> <laughs> so like there's so many um just, he's such a prevalent part of like just culture now that like I, I doubt he'd have complaints about that i don't think he misses whoever he was prior to um mm. being rick flair but they committed they were in it and the thing is like the thing that's like extra extraordinary is like um they wrestle like we we're going to watch like a weekly show they used they used to have like two weekly shows and like a pay-per-view like a month and those are the mm-hmm. only the things that are televised they would have uh like house shows 
So shows that are not televised, they would be on the road like 300 plus days of the year. So imagine having to pretend to be somebody the majority of the time for 300 days of the year. Like that's gotta be crazy. Like a mental fortitude that I don't understand. Therapy could never undo that. No. (laughs) And the thing, and like this was the 90s. Like who who was going? And also when that was when would they even have time to? Because they're in like a different city like every day. Wow. And that also because like they're not only just like performing, they're training, they're like yeah, doing like they're doing the whole thing. Oh my god, that is crazy. I know it's it must have been just like absolutely exhausting whoa there wasn't like one super like part this this week um but i'm kind of because we're going back in time i'm kind of interested to see just kind of what comes up that just like absolutely would not fly today um Mm. because i think that's just going to be an interesting thing to kind of just like look back on and be like that was on television, like yeah. fully. Um, the only one I could like think of was this episode had a part where um the body Donna's had a kind of like fake Sunny, um, which was just a dude dressed in drag, essentially. Um, yeah. or like as today, that probably wouldn't fly. Um, just because typically that is a thing, like the um, you know, just men dressed as women as like the punchline of like a joke um right. and where we are like today that probably was the only thing that really like stood out to me um that probably like wouldn't fly um today. yeah um did anything else like, like... Be as, i was gonna say especially when they said like she's as ugly she would be as ugly in the dark as she is in the light i was like oh my god <laughs> no <laughs> fully I, and then very like, insulting I, there's this one part where she like literally just starts referring to or sunny starts referring to um the like the drag character just like as a beast and like i was just like yikes i was like that's brutal that's absolutely yeah. brutal Very um brutal. but yeah that's makeup the only thing i could though yo honestly like whoever did the makeup was <laughs> laid i don't know who did that sunny impersonation makeup but it was <laughs> she looked slicked back <laughs> she was slick not a single wrinkle contoured to how like so good <laughs> that's that's amazing um and <laughs> when, then can i ask a question yeah when because right so right now it's is it world wrestling federation yes so yes, yes, yes. and then at some point it switches to entertainment right Correct. wwe when does that happen um when do does they that make it like a big deal do they like go like we're gonna be this now like Okay, so, so make it, like the whole thing. Do you know the story behind like what happened, why they had to change their name? No. Okay, so they're already they the WWE was sued by um the WWF, the World Wildlife Foundation. Oh um, no, they were not. Yes, they were because it was Stop. They, they their organization predates um the wwe so they lost that lawsuit so they had to change their name um but that doesn't come until like i believe the early like 2000s so like they were just like running with it for a while before minute wow so and did not know that um so yeah so like it basically yeah they get through all of the 90s like call using like the wwf um and then that happens and they have to change it and it's really like i i mean i don't remember because in the early 2000s i was in like five or six so like um but to me i think they just like changed the name and just like we're like okay like moving on um Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because i used to have like old like wrestling like dvds and they would have like the wwf like blurred out on like the turnbuckles like in matches oh as god. if it was like a curse word or like oh something um so i think they like really lost that lawsuit like they were just like we are n- you are not allowed to use this whatsoever um oh, wow that's fascinating yeah um oh there's a few times that the wwe gets sued and as we as we cross um as we get through like the times we'll we'll go into that a little bit more you know, mostly because because it's fascinating like it's the history and the drama inside and outside of professional wrestling is just a one just truly 
it's humanity unfolds. <laughs> like, mm. um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of the gist. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch these with me um, and coming oh, yeah. on this adventure. I so think we're going to have a grand time um, just kind of making our way through. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Um, so all right, guys, this has been the first episode of the New to Wrestling podcast. Um, join us next week. We are going to watch the July 1st episode of Monday Night Raw. Um, which I believe is going to feature um, Shawn Michaels versus Marty Jannetty and The Undertaker versus Goldust. I have um, to see that. I'm so, like, yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna, gonna get to see the um, just a little bit more of Goldust unfolded because you really got to watch him in, in a match to see how just odd he is. I am so confused by him, and I'm like, I just. Like, I, I'm very curious to see his style of wrestling because it just, like, is is there going to be more glitter? Like, what's what's going to happen? There's, what's going to be the costume? I got to know. Oh, just, oh, well, yeah. Wait till you see his, like, entrance. Um, <laughs> I know. You're going to be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, thank you. Um, and, all right, guys. So, we will see you next week. Yeah, we'll see you next week. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.